The following is intended for mature audiences only. Discretion is advised. I want to channel my inner James Lipton here, and I want to ask you, what would Stoney McBlaze say about Cosmic Brownies cereal? Uh, dude, Cosmic Brownies cereal? It's, honestly, it's two of my favorite things. Space <laughs> and also snacks and also cereal, which is <laughs> three things. But that's the thing about things that are cosmic. They can be all things at once. What's up, besties? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Childlike a Best with Mike Valdez. And guess what, man? I'm still the second part of that title. I hope you're having a great week this week. If you want to have a bowl of cereal with us, please do. I would advise it, actually. Um, the cereal that we have on this episode is Little Debbie's Cosmic Brownie Cereal. Now, I'm not sure if that cereal is still in existence. However... Uh, there are many cereals uh, that are very, very good. And in fact, if you want to have your own favorite cereal, that's totally fine too. Uh, or have your favorite snack. Look, I don't discriminate here on this podcast. You can eat or not eat whatever it is that you want. However, if you're a cereal fan, I would like to tell you that if you were to go to my website right now, thekidfromup.com, that is my real website until Disney sues me, if you go to thekidfromup.com right now, there is a new tab that says My Favorite Cereals. And on that tab, it'll take you to Amazon, where some of my favorite cereals will be there. Now, you can get some cereal if you want. You can also do some grocery shopping. You can do all of that while supporting the show at the same time. So why not do something you were already going to do in the first place, but also support your favorite live-action cartoon character? Uh, I'm so excited about today's episode. Uh, today's guest is Austin Kress. Austin Kress is a very funny stand-up comedian. You may know him as his character that he plays on Instagram or TikTok called Stony McBlaze. Uh, it's a very popular character that went viral over the pandemic. And we talk a lot about that uh, on this episode. In fact, we talk about his childhood, of course, but we also talk about his stand-up comedy and how he got into that and also how the Sony McBlaze character was created. This episode is such a fun one and I really think that you guys are going to love it. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Austin Kress. And one of the funniest things that I saw, the first article that I saw about you was Austin Crest is funnier than his character. Is, is <laughs> much McBlaze. funnier than his Tony McBlaze character, yeah. Right. Which I find so interesting because, yeah. like, I mean... I guess, I guess in a weird way, what brought that character about? What brought about Stony McBlaze? Well, first of all, the internet would disagree that really? Austin Crest is funnier than Stony McBlaze. <laughs> Stony McBlaze has had far more success sure. than Austin Crest has. Uh, but that was that was a great article because I mean, a it's nice to to have any sort of recognition for of my stand up. I'll take it in press. Yeah. Somebody wrote down that I'm funny in a public forum. Let's go. Yeah. Great. Uh, second of all, yeah. Stony McBlaze is a character that I created um, in the pandemic uh, in February of 2021. And it's sort of based on my idea behind making it uh, was sort of like a riff on Sean Penn's character in Spicoli. Okay. Uh, in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And my thought process was like, there's always been sort of a big, goofy, over-the-top stoner character throughout right. pop culture. And uh, I was like, well, if they're going to always have one, let me let me play it uh, in, in yeah. the, you know, the two, the whatever we're in now, two 20, 2020s. Let me, let me be the roaring 2020s stoner character of right. the internet age. And um, so that was sort of my thought process. And I had been really studying comedy at uh, the Groundlings Theater here in Los Angeles. And okay. it's it's where, like, Will Ferrell went there and Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy and a lot of people. And so it's these big, like, point of view based characters. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd seen some other, you know, stoner characters online and they were all, like, sort of like surfer stoner characters. And they were all kind of, like, smaller, uh, more like, 
plot driven char- type characters. Right. And so I really had a blast just creating like this this POV of this dude who just like loves to smoke and loves to shred and then like gets online and is like reacting to it. Um, yeah. And reacting to ended up reacting to a lot of other stuff too. So it came from pandemic boredom, uh, learning how to use TikTok. Uh, my girlfriend's like really smart with social media, so it came right. from her advice. And then uh, the types of characters I'd sort of been like playing with and and getting cast in because I, I was working on acting in Los yeah. Angeles. Sure. Um, so it's, it's sort of the types of characters that it it was like sort of the the. It's a character I kind of look like, and I mm. like to say it's sort of like the highest version of myself. Um, yeah. So it's it's uh, not too much of a stretch for me <laughs> to to be that guy, because uh, I am kind of that guy all a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, so yeah, it came out of it came out of studying comedy and improv and character creation at the Groundlings and the pandemic and. Um, that's where that came from. And then the article came from the fact that I, I got enough followers to get invited to the X games. And I was like a very small part of the X games broadcast. Uh And uh, I had a a blast there, but then a bunch of like hardcore snowboarders got really angry that I was involved because they (laughs) wanted it to be like pure and all about the shred and stuff. And they didn't want any sort of a goofy satirical fun, take on snowboarders they were not interested in that at all so they got very upset and the reporter came because he was also upset (laughs) or i guess didn't like or didn't think stony mcblaze was funny uh and just thought it was dumb and and to his credit it is dumb and that is why i think it's funny i think it's funny because it's dumb that's sort of the fun of it for me and first it's the best thing about keep making a character or doing a joke on this on stage which like you know the i always say like the most hack thing you can do is walk into a room and and basically reverse engineer what's going to make an audience laugh like what you should do is go up on stage and bring the audience in on what you think is funny you know what i mean like yeah that's what you should be doing as a stand-up or as a character or something like that and i find that hilarious because I'm assuming that has to be what marine biologists felt like when Jackass hosted Shark Week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, because it's like, these guys, like, these assholes are doing this. You know, like, um, but yeah, like, I mean, that's, honestly, that's that's an amazing story. And what's so cool about that is, like, you know, yeah, we all, like, sometimes we find, you know, especially nowadays, like, we are basically you know we we are kind of pigeonholed into these characters or these personas but it kind of allows us to branch out and show people hey i'm more than this you know and and things like that which is really super interesting because you know yeah like a lot of people wouldn't necessarily know like oh wow like he's actually a stand-up and oh wow he's actually good and oh wow like he's actually a person with human feelings and wow he's actually a person you know like things like that like it's it's, yeah yeah it's a it's a wild it's a wild thing because like at the end of the day it's no different than like steve carell's just a guy you know what i mean like he's not michael scott like he's just a guy you know what i mean so like it's uh it's a beautiful thing um I kind of want to start from the very beginning with you. Uh, Mm -hmm. Where did you grow up, Austin? I was born in upstate New York, uh, Rochester. Very cold, very snowy place. Uh, I lived there until I was 14, and then I moved to Raleigh, North Carolina. I was there until I was 19, and then I drove across country to Los Angeles. And I've been here uh, for 10 years in a couple days it'll nice. be it'll be my 10 year anniversary in la um That's insane. yeah so so sort of a little bit of all over the place i don't i don't necessarily feel like i'm from either of those places even though quite literally i am but yeah. emotionally i feel like i'm from the valley in los yeah. angeles i feel like i, I found uh, myself and i've grown up more here and I've changed so much because I, you know, raised super Christian, super homeschooled. And so mm-hmm. it was a real process of, uh, 
unlearning a lot of my childhood and becoming a, a pers- the person who I am today. And right. so it was, um, I feel more defined by my time in Los Angeles than I do by my time in, in Raleigh or in, uh, in upstate New York. So, but yeah, that's where I was born and raised. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's funny because I relate to that in so many mm. ways because I'm from I'm from Miami, Florida, and nice. um, it's a nice place to be from. Sure, like it's I like but, Miami a lot. Yeah, it's cool. It's a nice place to visit, you know. But yeah. um, that's that's about it. Um, yeah. but I'm I don't necessarily feel like I'm a Miami guy. You know what mm. I mean? Like mm. I'm very like you know, and and I moved I moved to Los Angeles a little while. Uh, back before the pandemic and moved back, you know, uh, later on. But um, when I was in California, I was like, oh, man, like, now I actually feel like I'm where I'm from in a weird way. Because like, you know, yes, I'm, you know, I'm Cuban. And like, you know, I, I grew up, you know, in a Spanish speaking household and things like that. But like, everything that taught me English is stuff from california where everybody was talking like they were from the valley <laughs> yeah so, so yeah. that's why i sound like a 14 year old valley girl when yeah. i speak you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> so like it's yeah but but that's that's always how i felt and it's so it's so interesting man like you know you were saying you were homeschooled because that kind yeah. of negates my next question which was what kind of a kid were you uh at school well, I went. Which, oh, that that was also I I talk about that in my stand up a little bit, which is I sure. actually was I went to all kinds of schools. So okay, cool. I was I was homeschooled from first through fifth grade. Okay. Sixth grade and seventh grade, I went to a private Christian school in upstate New York. Mm-hmm. Eighth grade, I went to middle school in upstate New York. Ninth grade, we moved down to North Carolina. So I was homeschooled in ninth grade. Tenth grade was sort of a hybrid, almost like a college situation for homeschooling, okay. where once a week, we'd go and have a teacher, uh, and again, air quotes on teacher, it's sure. like somebody's mom, yeah. uh, would teach a group of like six of us, <laughs> and then uh, we would get homework for a week, and then do all of it, and then come back. So it was very much like kind of a college situation. And then 11th grade, back to public public high school, and then I, I graduated half a year early because uh, of, of credits in homeschooling. But basically, a year and a half was... Um, public school uh, yeah. uh, in North Carolina. So I kind of did all three types of school. Um, other than like a boarding school, I guess. I didn't go to a boarding school or a military school, but I yeah. did do a uh, homeschool is kind of a boarding school. Uh, oh, okay. You live and study in the same place. But uh, so yeah, <laughs> uh, the kind of kid I was though was a strange kind of kid. I was a weird, weird kid. Sometimes funny, often not, often trying to be funny. Sure. Um, I sort of had friends, but only like a couple. I only had like one real friend in high school that I w- I'm still friends with. Okay. Uh, who went to my high school that I had classes with. And then I have another friend from my sort of high school time, um, but we never actually went to school together. And then that's it as far as like. So I was a weird outcast sort of kid. Uh, Cause not like a true outcast, not like. Bull- bullied in christian school for sure yeah because um, i was so much poorer than all the other kids that went to christian school um so weird. it's expensive it's expensive yeah. to go to christian school it is um, yeah and so my parents i guess were barely able to afford it um i'm probably still paying for it in some mm-hmm. some sense uh and so i was yeah weird kind of made fun of uh i i all of my clothes were from goodwill like mm-hmm. a decade before that was cool um <laughs> That it just sucked back then, and no American Eagle or Abercrombie and Fitch yeah. or Hollister. I had you know whatever Champion, Champion before when Champion was still trash. Yeah. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, it was less than ideal. I never truly felt like I fit in. I was always trying to fit in, and it never really accomplished that goal very well uh, in any of my schooling, uh, in any of my times in schooling. Uh, so that yeah. was kind of the kid I was. I did theater, like I did one play in high school because uh-huh. I knew I wanted to be an actor at that point by junior year. And I had like an agent in North Carolina, but it didn't materialize anything. Sure. Uh, so I was like, sort of did theater, didn't really play sports. 
I played sports a little bit in middle school. Like I, I played all the sports. I played football. I played soccer. Uh, I played lacrosse in middle school. And then um, I got the worst advice I'd ever been given, actually, in high school. I worked out with the uh, high school lacrosse team for like two weeks. And I quit to get a job at Outback Steakhouse um, <laughs> so I could save up money. I had a job at Chick-fil-A, but then I got it. But I needed to make more money. So I got a job at Outback Steakhouse. And my high school lacrosse coach, who didn't even know my last name, he thought it was Kresh the entire time. Wow. He didn't even know. He probably didn't even know my first name. He <laughs> was like, listen, you're going to have your whole life to, to work. You're only going to have one year to play high school lacrosse. So <laughs> I think you should stay on the lacrosse team. And that's easily the worst advice I've ever gotten. Of course. Uh, I'm going to write. I wasn't even good at lacrosse. I would have ridden the bench in on high school lacrosse and not made m- enough money to move to Los Angeles. I barely made it. I honestly probably didn't have enough money to move to Los Angeles. Right. But I, I, I had just enough that I thought, yeah, I'll make this work. Um, yeah. So anyone who tells you, oh, high school, you only get high school. Live in the moment in high school. Don't live in the moment in high school. <laughs> live in the future. High school is stupid. It is Everyone stupid. I know. I don't know if you had a good high school experience, but uh, everyone I know that did have a good high school experience is like still chasing it. And yeah. it, I've been fortunate. My childhood sucked. I had trauma. Mm-hmm. I had, you know, I didn't like what was going on. It was it was not a fun time. I don't mm-hmm. really like my childhood. Uh, and sure. honestly, I there's large portions of it I've had a lot of trouble remembering because yeah. of PTSD. So of course, shout out to therapy for. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're like the podcast is about your childhood, and I was like, "Well, thank God I've been doing therapy for the last year. I right. might actually be able to remember some of it for it." Uh, but uh, yeah, don't focus on high school. High school's dumb and it sucks. And if you if, if if high school if you're having a good time in high school, be worried. Yeah, because most people I know who had a good time in high school uh, have a, a real tough time in adulthood because it sucks. No, um, you're, you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely yeah. correct, man. I mean, how was very, it for you? How, how was high school for you? It was fine. I mean, yeah. it was. It, I mean, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it wasn't the best thing in the world. It was okay, just. Nice. It was That's just good. there. You yeah. know. Um, That's good. I like certain things about high school. Um, yeah. Where, like, you know, like I liked performing and I liked things like that, but I wasn't very. I wasn't very good at being social. I wasn't very mm. good at like having a lot of friends you know i spent most of my lunches inside of a piano room like right playing piano and singing songs to myself you know yeah so like that's the kind of kid that i was you know so like whenever i answer this question it's always like i was popular but i wasn't because nice yeah i was popular in the sense of like i was in like the school assembly plays and things like that so kids would know me from that and they'd be like, oh, he's the funny kid from that one thing. And then yeah. when that would die off in a couple of days, I would yeah. just go back into anonymity, you know? Dude, not honestly, kind of the move. Yeah. Kind of the best version of high school where yeah. it's not like this big, like, traumatic four years, but it's also not like the best four years of your life. So you're right. kind of you're kind of set. You have a nice foundation to sort of move into the next part of your life without yeah. high school being this, you know, thing, uh, too good or too bad. So that's kind of the dream right down the middle. That's kind of what you want your high school experience to be is like, it happened and right. it wasn't too good or too bad. It's that's perfect. Yeah. One of the fun things about it too, was I went to high school with a kid that was, um, he was in my class. He was in a very popular Nickelodeon show. Um, right on. And so because of that, it made me feel like acting was attainable because nice. I was like, because I was like, oh, like, because before you would watch TV and you're like, those those people live in my TV. Yeah. And then you see them and you're like, wait a second, like, you know, Bobby, Bobby can do this. So can I like, you yeah. know, at the end of the day, like this is just a hip and, a, you know, a skip and a hop away. And uh, so you know it kind of made me realize like oh that's the what i want to do like i want to become an actor and you know things like that plus so, it was great because bobby always had cocaine yes. that's one of the that's one of the fun things about the child stars yeah they got bobby bobby had champagne and he he got us all hooked on opiates. yeah 
<laughs> he got us Bobby all was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bobby, if you're listening, this is satire, but um, don't sue me. But <laughs> Um, we didn't he say, didn't say it. Bo- Bobby yeah. didn't. You didn't say anything. I am. Ma- I am conjecturing, Bobby. Uh, it's true. Yeah, and Bobby. Ooh, if just... you want to sue me, go for it. I could use the press. I'll take the press. I'll take. I could use the press, and I could use a new ten minutes. Actually, yeah. Bobby. The headline so, would be Austin yeah. Crest is Austin Crest is funnier than his suit going on. Yeah, right it's now. funnier than his lawsuit. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> And if we've learned anything from Logan and Jake Paul, it's that yeah. all press is good press. So and true. Me, Bobby, if you want to box, Bobby, let's box. Let's get that pay per view going, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't want to box with the middle brother from the Brothers Garcia? Like, <laughs> I'm in. Hey, oh, wait, did you say Brothers Garcia? Yes. Oh, fucked. Everybody, everybody named Garcia is good at box. Famously good at boxing. <laughs> Uh, never mind. Sorry, Bobby. I'm not boxing. A, I'm not boxing somebody named Garcia from Miami. He probably yeah. has an uncle who's like a heavyweight champ. Yeah, that's terrifying. It's never mind. Very true. Never mind, Bobby. Sorry, Bobby. I'm I love it. It is satire, Bobby. It's satire. Um. So I this is this is one of my favorite parts of the show, like the the fun part of the show. Uh, what are your favorite snacks growing up? Ooh. Favorite snacks growing up. I was a sucker for like really just creating uh my honestly a favorite snack growing up is um you'd get like just vanilla frosting mm-hmm. and if you're feeling real crazy you get like cinnamon and sugar. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause frosting and sugar are not the same. Sure. Uh, <laughs> you don't learn that they're the same until you become an adult and you're like, oh those are both sugar. Okay. Uh, I like that in a tortilla warmed up in the microwave. Okay. So it kind of melts and you get this sort of like, uh, like almost like a toaster strudel situation going wow. on. Um, really good tortilla and, and frosting in the microwave with, uh, cinnamon and sugar is, uh, that's a, that's a clutch one. Uh, what else did I like growing up? That was good. Um, I mean, it's so simple and so obvious, but like yeah. apples and peanut butter is great. Sure. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm trying to think if I have any other real specific snacks. Uh, my mom was always like making cookies. Those mm-hmm. are, she like legit could make a le- like a really good cookie. So I like anything my mom would make. Um, dude, what? A- oh, the little. Um, the little uh it's like you got it's the little plastic container and there's cheese right here and then you have the little pretzel uh, no they're not even pretzels they're just handy like little snacks. huh handy snacks yeah yeah. yes those are great stick, you would probably you would swallow by accident yeah the little yes the little <laughs> bread stick yeah. the little bread stick uh with the cheese was awesome um I think those are kind of the favorites. Those nice. are the ones that come up first as like real standout snacks for nice. sure. We like to talk about cereal on this podcast as well. Yeah. Um, what were your favorite cereals growing up? Um, Favorites growing up and still favorites. I, I love yeah. Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles Same. is like top for me. Uh, uh, that's a great one. Um, what else? That's my top cereal. Fruity Hell Pebbles yeah. is, is it, I mean, it's up there. I also like Honey Bunches of Oats. I like, sure. I like, a, I like a cereal that you can get to that perfect texture. Yes. Like, you know, some cereals and people laugh, but some cereals are too sharp. Yeah. Like, for instance, uh, uh, Captain Crunch, right? Great mm-hmm. idea. Great concept. Always kind of cut up the roof of my mouth. Yes. And. And and I feel like it didn't have a good half life. Like I felt like Captain Crunch was either too sharp or too soggy and didn't have a good middle. Yeah. And I think like Fruity Pebbles has like a great middle, uh, where it's like the right texture. Uh same with same with like honey bunches of oats. And honey bunches of oats, you feel healthy eating. It. <laughs> yeah, if but you don't you're, read you're any not. of the No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. But if you don't read any of the info, if you don't yeah. look at it, it feels almost like a granola. Um, sure. So yeah, I love it. I love a cereal that will get to that perfect, that perfect texture for me. I uh, love it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, one of the best things I found out recently 
at Target, they sell the uh, Lucky Charms marshmallows just in a bag by themselves. Yep. Oh, yeah. And Lucky Charms is like, was is kind of that cereal that was like, it sucked because the actual cereal is so bad. Like oh, yeah. The Lucky Charms cereal is like dog food. And, but the but the the marshmallows are great, so I took those recently and I put that I put the marshmallows from Lucky Charms in a I found like Trix minis like they're, okay. they're the, like the tricks but they're smaller and yeah that was like a really good base hell yeah for it um, I love that so that's like a little hack if you can I don't know if they sell them at every Target or just so, I don't know but if you can find it that's a yeah great one. definitely recreate that cereal because it's really great that's um, a good one so. Every episode of this podcast, I'd like to review a box of cereal with my guest. And usually okay. I like to get a cereal that has something to do with my guest in some way, shape or form. So yeah. I got uh, I spoke with my sponsors over at Kellogg's and okay. uh, by sponsor. I mean that I like them. And uh, by spoke to, I mean that I DM them and they blocked me. Uh, future, so, future sponsor. Yeah, future exactly. Sponsor Kellogg's. Yeah. So uh, the cereal that I chose for you, let me see here as I hold my microphone and my laptop at the same time. <laughs> as you do this i'll give a little background what's <laughs> funny about you choosing kellogg's oh Cos- i didn't even know this was a, a cereal yes this is great oh th- wow so i chose yeah. i chose cosmic brownies cereal goodness gracious wow I, difficult to do there we go there's no, that's great coming. oh i didn't know this was a i didn't know this was a thing yeah I mean, the cos the cosmic brownies i i did forget i forgot about those uh that was an insane that's a Dude, great Plutch snack. move is to just get the cosmic brownies put them in a yeah. bowl put milk yeah in it. <laughs> i think you're fine i think if you you can just chop them up even if you wanted to that's a great yeah. that's a i mean it's better one. than the cereal i will say that because the cereal yeah. is kind of mid to be completely honest okay sorry okay. Well, there, there goes uh, that sponsorship <laughs> oops um, but anyway wow. what a good i what a good uh a good thought though what a great thought. It is a great thought. Yeah. I mean, granted, every little Debbie thing yeah. could they, uh, does, could work. You, when yeah. you think about it, like oatmeal cream pie, which is actually a cereal. Um, Nutty Buddy, which is actually a cereal that I have here, yeah. too. Oh, um, and all these snacks. These are all great snacks. Yeah, Cosmic yeah. Brownies cereal yep. uh, is the cereal awesome. that I chose for you um, for many reasons. But obviously, yeah. uh, I want to channel my inner James Lipton here. And I want to ask you... What would Stony McBlaze say about Cosmic Brownies cereal? Uh, dude, Cosmic Brownies cereal, it's, honestly, it's two of my favorite things. Space <laughs> and also snacks and also cereal, which is <laughs> three things. But but that's the thing about things that are cosmic. They can be all things at once. Yeah. And so I would say, you know, it's a it's a meeting of the minds. It's a cereal that is probably created by Neil deGrasse, Neil deGrasse, Neil <laughs> Neil Tyson, Neil Tyson, Neil Mike Tyson. Tyson's cousin, Neil Mike Tyson, Tyson cousin, yes. uh, and maybe even Bill William Nye. Maybe even William Nye yeah. got involved because this is a scientifically thought out cereal snack yeah. for sure. Um, but like you said, dude, I'm just trying to go straight to the source. Give me the brownies raw. I'll throw them in the mulk. It'll be a good time. Um, yeah, I think that's what Stoney would say about. about <laughs> no, I love it, man. I, I love. Thank you for yes ending that bit. I love dude, all, it. all 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 the time. Um, yeah, um, that is cosmic brownies cereal, ladies and gentlemen. They said thousands could- of dollars of improv training, and you too can yeah. do do bits on podcasts yeah. over uh- Zoom. It's very, very true. <laughs> it's very, very true. And really, that is all your money gets you when you take classes. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah. yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I have, I, I have that and uh, and one character that works uh, that I might go. use to audition for SNL. And they'll probably be like, nah, I'd rather just put you in a wig. <laughs> so- they'll be like, you need six more. <laughs> one is good that's a great start but you do need six more for yeah. snl <laughs> you do need six more you do and need they six also more. need to be funny and they so, all have to be great <laughs> pardon the brief interruption besties but me and my buddy alf just wanted to talk to you about childlike wonder childlike wonder is the official merchandise store of mike valdez and of childlike at best as you can see here there are some shirts with my face on them that say comedy's favorite cartoon 
as well as the Viewmaster Collection, which is one of my favorite designs that we have. You've seen me rock many a t-shirt from the Viewmaster Collection. Another is the some of the church merch that we have. We have a shirt that just says Church Camp. We also have a crew neck that says Unspoken Prayer Request, because as good Christian kids, we all had those unspoken prayer requests that were definitely rumors about Stacy or whatever person we knew growing up in the church. I'm so excited about this collection and I'm so excited to release it to all of the besties. So if you want to support the show or support me in any way, please just go to childlikewonder.co and grab yourself a tea or a crew neck and tag me on Instagram. I'll repost you. I'm super excited for you guys to get into this. So thank you guys for supporting and thank you guys for being so incredibly amazing this episode is also brought to you and will always be brought to you by our good friends over at the crunch cup if you are a day one child like a best listener you know about the crunch cup the crunch cup is a portable cereal cup that keeps your cereal crunchy it's a tumbler that separates your cereal from the milk which is amazing and such a great advancement for us cereal lovers because I am an anti-soggy cereal person personally. In fact, so much so they actually have a crew neck that I'm really wanting to get called the anti-soggy cereal club. You can get crunch clips for your cereal bag. You can also get a bowl to separate milk from your cereal, or you can just have chips and salsa if that's what you want. To purchase the Crunch Cup or any of the Crunch Cups merch, just like this amazing crew neck I was talking about, go to thecrunchcup.com and use promo code Mike Valdez 10 as you can see right here, Mike Valdez 10 to get 10% off of your order. Support your love for the show and be a part of the Anti-Soggy Cereal Club by going to the Crunch Cup dot com and using promo code Mike Valdez 10. Thanks to the Crunch Cup for always being such a supporter of Child Like It Best. Now back to the show. When did you start doing stand-up comedy? In the pandemic also. Okay, yeah, I cool. started. Uh, my girlfriend started doing it. She was taking a lot of classes on Zoom. And then whenever things started kind of like opening back up a little, a little bit, we started doing open mics together. And then... Oh, yeah. uh, I started and quit like three different story. times. It is a good one. Yeah. That's, it's, that's a it's Taylor a Swift song waiting, waiting to happen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She, I write punchlines. She, she writes setups. She, she writes. Never, we are basically the Gaffigans. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Deep cut. Jim Gaffigan doesn't write any of his material. It's nope. all his wife. It's all Take- his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was it nice of him to say? <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> Jim. Jim. Yeah. Jim's great. Jim's very yeah, funny. Great. Jim's very funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we man. have to say that we're contractually obligated, but yeah, um... we do. That is it. <laughs> yeah. true. I do think, for the record, Jim Gaffigan is incredibly funny. Of so course, let that, let that state. Kidding? Jim Gaffigan is funny, and your friend Bobby is hooked on pills. <laughs> for the record, I for mean, the record, you're not wrong about either of those statements. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, yeah, during the pandemic, I uh, started during the pandemic. Uh, and I've completely changed uh, again my whole personality. I'm now focused on stand up, and sure. acting is uh, not even in my purview. Um, but to be fair, I do act kind of every day with the Stony character, course, yeah. so I I uh, I do get that kind of thing. But yeah, it changed. I, I was so passionate when I moved to Los Angeles about acting. I was so serious, to like too serious, like douchey serious about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I've kind of uh, transitioned into like the idea of wanting to act in things that I'm only really right for. So not, I don't want to do a ton of acting if that makes sense. Like sure. I want, I don't want to stretch myself as an actor. I want to do things that are within arm's reach of me, uh, comedically and. Uh, yes, and something you learn living in Los Angeles. Uh, there's not a ton of great actors in Los yeah. Angeles. So if <laughs> if someone is an asshole or a pedophile on TV, they're an asshole and a pedophile in real life. Oh, yeah. They're just sort of turning it up by 10%. And I am a, a goofy stoner in real life. And yeah. so if you see me playing a goofy stoner, it's because that's me. I'm just turning it up a little bit or down yeah. a little bit for the project and that's no, why i just kind of want to do that sort of work you're absolutely right man i mean it's difficult because 
you know, I, and, and I don't want to put thoughts in your brain or words in your mouth, but when I went to Los Angeles uh, to be, to be an actor and like, and look, I'm still an actor, I'm still a working actor and all these different things, but I kind of, in a, in a lot of ways, feel like comedy found me because um, I never wanted to be a stand-up comedian because I respected it so much. You know, yeah. it was something where I was just like, I could never be as funny as, you know, Jim Gaffigan. I could never be as funny as Dave Chappelle. I could never be as funny as Chris Rock or whatever. Yeah. And, and that's true. But yeah, it is when you true. go to an open mic, you realize that, oh, I can be funnier than that guy at this open <laughs> mic. Yes. And you also learn that, that Jim Gaffigan, Chris Rock, those are like the top 1% of stand-ups. So yes. I've sort of realized, like, for me, stand-up is like, uh, I don't watch a ton of sports, but I think the NFL is like a pretty good comparison as far as like, there are the NFL players that we all know. There's Tom mm -hmm. Brady, Randy Moss, Rob Gronkowski. I'm only naming Patriots players, but <laughs> there, <laughs> there are all these great, there's these great guys and everyone knows their name. They have all the sponsorships. Um, uh, the dude from the chief, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. The, the, those are the top 1% of football players, but there's 90% of football players that are in the NFL that make a million dollars plus a year. We don't know their names. They're great. They're still incredible football players. Mm -hmm. Um, and I kind of am hoping to do that with stand up, just sort of find my place in the industry where I'm making a living and supporting myself and yeah. I don't have to have roommates anymore. Yeah. And, uh, and then that's fine, you know? And so there's, you don't, yeah. There's also the third person that you, that I would say as well, which is uh, the football player that comes to your Thanksgiving dinner who said they could have gone pro had they not broken their ACL. Yeah. And that's every <laughs> family member pitching you jokes. That's yeah. every family member who's like, oh, you know, be a funny joke. Yeah. You know, one time I got my car towed after uh, a night of drinking at the bar. Can you do anything with that? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I can't actually. It's, uh, it's funny when you do it, but <laughs> it's funny when you do it. It's not funny I can't, when that's not. No, I, that's I literally, not me. I literally meant to me. It's funny when you Austin do it, but it's not funny when yeah. my member, my family member, does it. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's it's not. I had a coworker one time, and they, I've talked about it so much. It might become a bit because it's so crazy. I was doing. He's like, "Oh, you do stand up? That's awesome." He's like, "You should do a joke about karma." And I was like, oh, okay, right on. Mm -hmm. Like, in what sense? And he's like, well, just sort of the concept of, ca oh, okay. Just the whole concept of karma? Just the entire philosophical uh, discipline of karma. That, yeah. Do just that as a joke. The whole thing books have been written about because sure. nobody truly understands it. Entire religions about it. are based around this. Let me work on that bit for you. Let me distill that down to a poignant five. Yeah, I mean, that's insane. <laughs> it's funny. It You know... That it it that itself is the cosmic brownie cereal of pitch ideas yeah. because literally yeah because on paper it sounded great and then the explanation made me realize oh this is worse than I thought no this is impossible <laughs> to be as good as that's gonna make stand up and karma worse that's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna help us dude that's insane yes. so that's the yeah the, exactly so to your point. Everyone thinks, and every time you tell someone that you do stand up, you do always get that. Um, and oh it, it, thankfully, it's it's happening less and less. But like when you first start doing stand up and you invite your friends to your first like three stand up shows, they're all like, "Oh, you know, I've been meaning to do. I've been. I should try mm -hmm. it." And um, and and you're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And then thankfully, that's kind of gone away. And I think it's because you, it does seem pretty attainable your first couple shows because your stuff isn't that good. The whole yeah. lineup isn't that good. And so all your friends are like, oh, I can do it. And then all of a sudden you start getting better and your friends are like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. Because because like six months later, they're like, you know, I should try it. And you've been doing it consistently for six months mm -hmm. and it, it becomes a different thing. Um, 100% right. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's that that is so true where like, in fact, I've always been the type of person that when somebody says, oh, I should try it. And I'm always like, try it. See yeah, what that's, happens. Be that's become my answer. It's like, yeah, you definitely should try it. Just it's do like, it. It's kind yeah. of like, it's kind of like a really like awful, almost like, almost like masochistic kind of a thing where I'm just like, 
do it. <laughs> like, yeah. try it. Yeah. Try but to live like me, and you'll see how difficult it is. <laughs> it's it's 50 50, too, because on the one hand, there's a percentage of people that you're like, yeah, try it. And you know they'll just fail, and you know, they'll course. be like, oh, this is a lot harder. They'll respect you more. And there's that like 1% of person where you're like, try it. And they'll like, ooh, this sucks, and I love it. And so mm-hmm. it is kind of really the best advice. If you're thinking about doing it, just do it because, you yeah. know, it. Uh, and that's the nice thing about stand up is you can you can try it, you can quit, you can come back. Stand up mm-hmm. is all about you and your life. So depending how much life you've lived, um you can you can do it at any time. You could not do stand up until you're 40 and then do stand up and it it'll take you a little bit of time to figure out the medium, but you'll have all the stuff, you'll have all the life to talk about. So yeah. And in a lot of ways you should wait to 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 try to do comedy later so you actually have some things to sort of talk about right and what's so beautiful too is that it's such the opposite of acting in the sense of like acting is so about your image it is so about like well austin looks like a stoner so we're gonna put him in all of the stoner roles but it's like well, yeah, but Austin can also be in a drama about this thing because he's also talented. You know what I mean? But yeah. but he looks like this, so let's just do that. You know? Yeah. And stand up is such a we don't know who you are until you start doing your jokes. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's kind of a really you know beautiful thing. Like you know, for example. You know, a lot of a lot of people would look at me like, you know, like look at me, look at my body and be like, oh, he's a bigger guy. He's probably just going to talk about how fat he is the whole time. I do not have a single joke about my body. Well, that is a mistake. You should have (laughs) at least one. (laughs) You should have at least one joke about your body. (laughs) Low hanging fruit, man. Low hanging fruit. (laughs) I mean, I have I have a joke about what I look like, but I don't have I don't necessarily have jokes about like you know because nothing to me as like you know as as a person who is who struggles with their weight like nothing yeah bothers me more than seeing a comedian who has a a tour that says like still hungry like right, get your right. hand out of my dick dude like right. you know what i mean like it's like are we still going to be like do this like there's other things that can be funny like you yeah. know you know like i said it's it's about bringing in it's people bringing people in on what you think is funny you For know sure, yeah. and so so yeah, you know, I do have jokes, you know, where that are not necessarily about my about my body or whatever, you know. Um but but yeah, man. I mean, that's it's but it's so different because when I am an actor, it's like, well, we have to put him as like, you know, guy who's unattractive to women, you know, number 1 or whatever. Acting, you know, like, acting so brutal for like oh, the yeah. breakdowns like uh you see like I I've been pretty fortunate, but every now and then you do get the one where you're like, you know, it's like strung out or whatever. Right. But I'm pretty fortunate being like just like a straight younger white guy. Like I'm auditioning for roles where I don't feel too insulted, but I see the other breakdown sometimes. And I'm like, yo, who is going to, who are you going to call in for? Like, like you said, (laughs) Guy, piece of shit guy who's yeah. jerking off in the park. Good. Exactly. Re- repulsive man. <laughs> can't, even, can't even call the guy Greg. <laughs> like, like it's a like... <laughs> repulsive man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, and it's repulsive man number four. Like, mm-hmm. you know? And it's yeah. like, well, this is my big break. Like, I get yeah. to be in a freaking Alicia Silverstone movie or whatever. Like, Pervert you know? <laughs> number. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it's so stupid. Like, but, but that's... Unfor- but that's the beauty of comedy is that you can you can be like no man like screw that noise i yep. have something that i love that i'm good at where i make good money doing it yeah and, or could make good money doing it and i'm just me all the time yeah as opposed to like and and even then like there are stand-ups who are getting into acting like gaffigan which we've been talking about quite a bit and yep. people are giving him a chance because guess what he has range right yeah yeah and people know that because they've seen his stand-up 
like yeah. not because not because he did you know a million different acting choices or whatever well, to your earlier point it is any everything's more fun with like layers and nuance which is like of course so so like i like for me with stand up right now it's like I do have like stoner jokes and stoner bits because it's just like it's low hanging fruit. You got to yeah. address it. You got to talk about what you look like because the audience is thinking about it. So you, of course. you throw those out and then uh, and then you have but then you talk about like other stuff, too. And it, it like a good show of any kind a TV show, stand up show, cartoon, whatever is, is usually best if it like has hits a couple of the things that you're expecting right off the top. And then you sort of get into like a, another level of uh like jokes which is fun to see with everybody all i think like a lot of the best stand-ups have like you know yeah i'm you know i, I look like this or like i and i know that you think this but here's here's the flip uh and that's that's the like, creates a really fun right show entertainment you know? of course yeah yeah and that's that's exactly that's exactly right i mean you know um I I talk one of one of my bits. I mean, the the opening bit that I do is like I talk about like I look like the kid from Up, you know, the the movie Up, and it's a it's a you know it's a good it's a good joke. It gets a great response, you know, this that and the other thing, and then I just I hit them with other punchlines that they weren't expecting, which is why yeah. the joke works for me, yeah. you know. Um, so because some of my favorite things to do is like kind of make the audience feel like they know where I'm going with something. Yeah. And then I'm not going that way. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like being like, I have like, for example, not to like, not to like do stand up for you, but like, it, like there's a joke that I have where I say, um, I'm not gay. I'm a Christian, but to be fair, they're kind of the same thing. Yeah. And, and I wait there to let them feel like, what could he possibly mean by that? And then I go, they both think they're better than you. Yeah, And as opposed to like, cause people are like, oh, because a man is inside of him or like, you know, whatever, like it could be a million different things, Yeah, but then it's the, but really the best punchline is they both think they're better than you. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, and so, um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's like, and that's comedy, baby. Like, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I mean, you've been, you've been hitting the festival circuit, which is really awesome. Um, yeah. And you're you're like basically like a full fledged touring comedian now, right? Uh, yeah, I am. I yeah. am a touring comedian. You uh, are though. I would say it's like the first. It's the beginnings. It's the very. Sure. I I did my first tour with my buddies Leonard Smith Jr. and Ray Lau. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did like kind of a West Coast tour, and we're doing more stuff on the East Coast and sort of the Southwest as well. But it's sort of it's very like self produced and like kind of a DIY tour. Sure. Um. So I am in the beginning stages of uh, the only thing that will change is frequency and size of venues is mm -hmm. is kind of the thing we're trying to increase right of now. Course. Um. But yeah, I am. I am. I'm touring. Yeah, that's Dude, great. I, I love yeah. it, man. <laughs> I mean, you're but you're but you're killing it, and I love how. Uh, you guys are coming to the East Coast pretty soon, right? Or you're wanting yeah. to at least. Yeah, no, no. September 21st, we're in uh, Morris Plains, New Jersey. 22nd, Brooklyn, New York. 23rd, Brooklyn, New York again. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, yeah, Phoenix, November 4th. Albuquerque, November 7th. And uh link is all links in my bio for those yeah all so, the links all the links and you all have any fans in san diego this sunday san yeah. diego plenty <laughs> of i mean very few tickets left really close but nearly <laughs> sold out so quickly buy them buy them fast <laughs> buy them very fast because there are very really fast or very we'll few lose our deposit <laughs> um, a ton of, of tickets left there uh yeah. almost sold out so get them get them quick <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Um, I want to just ask you a couple of questions uh, mm -hmm. before I let you go here. Um, what advice would you give to your younger self if you were to meet them today? Uh, get on antidepressants sooner. Yeah. And start therapy and antidepressants as, as soon as possible. Don't, in fact, don't go to a couple of those acting classes. Go to, okay. go to one of those months, two of those months. Don't even go to acting class. Take that money and spend it on therapy. Mm -hmm. uh that and then perfect my like mantra that i've had for a while i keep coming back to 
I don't know who said it. Shout out to whoever said it first, but perfect is the enemy of good is like mm-hmm. the best advice. Just just make stuff. It's so dumb because everyone says it, but like just make stuff and like it's just gonna suck. Uh, it's gonna suck so much. Uh, yeah. The product and the process is all gonna be so dog shit in the beginning, and mm-hmm. then eventually, just by the act of continuing to create, you'll make something that like you're proud of and other people like. Um, yeah, perfect is the enemy of good. Uh, is a big one that I've been telling myself lately um, as I'm, I'm branching out into YouTube and trying to figure out how YouTube works. And it's, yeah. it's a lot of like, just, just make it. And then slowly it'll get better uh, is the biggest, biggest one. Um, and also don't be an actor. Stop trying to be an actor. Do a comedy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do just start to start comedy sooner and focus on that would probably be my main, I think would be my main advice. Um, yeah, that's, Okay. But I mean, it, it's always tough to give advice to your younger self because you're course. sort of always like, I feel like I made the best the, the best decision I could with the information I had. Yeah. Um, and uh, and also my younger self wouldn't listen to me probably. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of the biggest problem. But yeah, I think the easiest and like best advice is like actually go to therapy a lot sooner. Mm-hmm. I would say is probably the best advice. You know, so you're saying you're saying that your younger self wouldn't wouldn't listen to you but yeah this is my next question which like and i and i actually completely relate to you in that if my younger self met me today my younger self would not listen to me either um but what do you think they would think of you like what would like would they think that you're a cool person would they respect you would they find would they would they think you're weird like what would they think about you uh yeah, I think they would respect me. I think they would yeah. be like really shocked at the amount of social media that I do because sure. of how much shit I talked about social media for mm-hmm. my entire life. Um, I I've always talked shit about social media and influencers, and then in, and there's my joke about karma as I became one. <laughs> uh, that's the karmic. That's the great karmic joke is I yeah. just constantly talk shit, and then uh. I became a social media person and I guess, and by, by definition, I guess an influencer, uh, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, I think they would be like, Oh, that's impressive that you've built something and impressive that you're still in Los Angeles. And also kind of disappointed. Cause I think my younger self would have thought that I'd be like a famous actor with an Oscar at this sure. point. Same. Uh, I, also, I don't think my, my younger self understood how young 28 is. Yeah. <laughs> I think that'd probably be the main thing my younger self wouldn't get is like, oh, oh, you're 28. You should have way more figured out. And then you get mm-hmm. to 28 and you're like, nah, dude, I'm literally just starting. It's so yeah. like, that's the main thing with younger selves is it's like your, your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, and even your 50s is not as old as you think. Yeah. Um, your 60s is old, yeah. In yeah. your 60s, you're fucking, you're definitely old. But like mm-hmm. in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, it's plenty of time. You're fine as long as you're like on some sort of consistent path where you're getting a little bit better um, as much as you can. That is, uh, yeah, I think that's the main thing. Is like you're you're still young. I would tell my younger self, plenty of time. Love it. Plenty of time. Yeah, love it. Um, that's... and also all all your bosses, everyone that you work for at these restaurants, don't matter at all. Be, you so can care true. way less about your restaurant job. You can care so much less about yeah. your restaurant job. Yeah, I think you, you should care more about being on their lacrosse team. In high yeah, school. yeah, yeah, you should have played. <laughs> that's actually the main advice: play high school lacrosse for a year. Yeah, and that <laughs> that would have made you. Yeah, so much much better person. I'm yeah, sure. Just ride Lacrosse the players creep. are famously good people and have never done anything criminal at Duke <laughs> Duke University. <laughs> There's never been any any sort of controversy with an entire lacrosse team before. <laughs> oh man, I love it, man. Austin Crest. Um, where can everyone find you online? Uh, let everyone know where they can get tickets, where they can follow you and stony mcblaze and all that uh cress underscore austin is my personal account uh stony mcblaze is my alter ego uh twin brother i like to joke uh, yeah. which is very awkward when i meet actual twins i feel like i've stolen <laughs> twin valor um but yeah stony mcblaze all platforms especially youtube 
I'm trying to grow the YouTube. So tune in to the YouTube. Um, and Sermic Plays, Austin Crest. And then in my link tree is is uh, links to all of my shows. As soon as I have a link to a show, I put it in my link tree. Um, mm-hmm. So we, we have links for San Diego on Sunday. We have links for uh, New York in September. And hopefully soon we'll have some of those November dates up as well. Yeah, man. Love it, man. Thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. Thank you for really. having me, Mike. That was very fun. Are you kidding me? This was this was such a blast to get to know you and just yeah. to talk comedy with you. Um, real quickly for me, you can follow me at Mike Valdez. You can go to thekidfromup.com to find out uh, all of my dates and my details on where you can, uh, you know, follow me and, and the podcast, all that stuff. Uh, also, subscribe. Let your friends know about this podcast uh, so we can grow this family. Other than that, don't lose your sense of childlike wonder. Bye, besties.